The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to explain breaches of contract. So, what is a breach of contract? A breach is when one party fails to perform their obligations under the contract. So, that can be a total failure of performance, a partial failure, so they perform some of their obligations but not all. Uh, they might perform but not in the manner specified in the contract, or they might perform but not within the deadline set in the contract. So, any of those things qualifies as a breach. So, Next, let's talk about what are the elements of an actual claim against somebody for breach of contract. So there's a difference between breaching the contract and being able to hold that person liable for breach of contract. And that's what these elements are that all have to be true. First, the defendant in this case has to have breached the contract. Second, there has to have been a valid contract. You can't have a breach of contract claim without a valid contract. And we'll talk in a minute about what a valid contract is. Uh, third, the injured party must have upheld their end of the bargain in the contract. So they must not have materially breached the contract themselves. And we'll talk again later what a material breach is. Fourth, there must have been economic damages to the injured party as a result of the defendant's breach. And finally, and now those are the elements, but finally there's a consideration. There has to be no valid defenses to the breach of contract claim. And we have an article and video on the different defenses of breach of contract. So if all of those things are true, then you probably have a good claim of breach of contract against the person who breached. Um, let's talk about one of those elements, when a contract is valid. A contract is valid when there is offer, acceptance, consideration, and the capacity to contract. So uh, an offer is someone extending an offer to, I'll, I'll do X if you do Y. Acceptance is someone accepting that offer instead of counter-offering, um, so they accept the exact offer. Consideration means that both parties receive a benefit from the contract, it's not a gift. Uh, and third, uh, I'm sorry, fourth, the capacity to contract means, you know, both people have the mental capacity to enter into, a, legally enter into a contract. They're not um, mentally incompetent. If they're a child, it might be a voidable contract, and we have articles and videos about that. But, so you, you need two people with the capacity to contract, giving offer, acceptance, and consideration. And if that's the case, then you've got a valid contract that, that you can hold the other party liable for if they breach it. Uh, a lot of people ask if they can be held liable for a breach of an oral contract. Contract doesn't have to be in writing to be valid. Some contracts do. There's certain types that do. Um, but in general, a, an oral offer and acceptance is fine for a contract as long as there's consideration. And if you breach that contract, you can be held liable for breaching it. Now the trick is it's much difficult, much more difficult to prove what the terms of the contract were um, if it's an oral contract. So it's a lot harder to enforce an oral contract, but it's still a contract and theoretically capable of enforcement. Uh, people ask, what is an, anticipa an anticipatory breach of contract? So an anticipatory breach, and this is also known as anticipatory repudiation, uh, occurs when one of the parties hasn't breached the contract yet, but they make it clear that it is not their intention to perform the contract. And this can be the person saying, I'm not going to perform this contract we have. Um, or it can be them basically doing something that would make performance inconsistent with that action. So if someone has one Maltese Falcon to sell, and they contract to sell it to you in a month, and in the meantime, they agree to sell it to somebody else earlier than the month, then that's anticipatory repudiation of your contract. And an anticipatory breach is a breach just like an actual breach. So if someone makes it clear that they don't intend to breach the contract, then you can go ahead and hold them liable for breach of contract or not perform your end of the contract yourself. Um, we've talked about material breach a couple times. So it's a material breach is uh, when the breach of contract substantially defeats any benefit the other party would get from the contract. So if someone delivers goods a couple days late, but the goods are still delivered, that might be a minor breach, not a material breach. Um, if there's a material breach of contract, the other party doesn't have to perform anymore. If there's a minor breach of contract, the other party should perform their end of the deal and then if they were damaged by the minor breach, seek damages uh, for that in, in court later on. But you can 
generally you're looking for a material breach of contract when you're trying to hold somebody liable for the breach in court. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, below this post at learn-about-law.com or below our YouTube video. Uh, if you found this helpful, please subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, and SoundCloud, and feel free to call at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.